plays bass here, doing the thing in my name. And today, I was kind enough to have this on loan. This is the Reverend Watt Plower Mark II. Uh, it's on loan from here. Heights Guitars in Toledo, Ohio, right here where I work. And they were kind enough on my off day to say, yeah, you can take that home. You know, show us what you got. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not the most familiar with Mike Watt's back catalog. I'm quickly becoming more familiar with it as time moves on. Uh, but what I am familiar with are quality short scale basses. Um, I am a smaller person in general, and my hands are about a men's medium, I think, as far as glove size goes. So I don't really have bass in hands. I started on guitar. And uh, when all my friends played guitar, they said, you can play bass instead. And I went, oh, if, it's, if I get to hang out, I guess. And I ended up liking it more than guitar anyway. So still play, of course. As you can see, my Reverend double agent there. And uh, Reverend started in Detroit but moved their way down south here to Toledo. And that's kind of how I quickly became familiar with them. A lot of my buddies started getting Reverends. And um, at first, I just kind of was like, well, you know, whatever. I got my own thing. Uh... But I realized as time moved on that Reverend was really nailing it. And to this day, I think they are the most solid option for the price point on the, you know, off the shelf market. I don't think anything else comes close, truth be told. And I say that with over 10 years of selling musical instrument experience and 20 years playing them. So, but enough about that. Uh, let's talk about the bass. You already heard it just a little bit here. I had it in the uh, downwards blade position. I suppose the most uh, standout feature of this bass already is it has three, well, four pickups, actually. But they are three pickups in options. So the neck pickup is this Rio Grande uh, guitar pickup, I believe. It's a uh, humbucker. And it's just what Mike decided he preferred and up here. He, I think he was mainly known for playing a what non-reverse Thunderbird over the years. Um, so this kind of fits that, uh, you know, Mudbucker territory with like the EBOs he also favored, I understand. Um, then the, the coolness happens where you have this reverse P thing. So you got the standard P and then the reverse P. And I'm myself, I'm a fan of a reverse P. I think it makes a lot of sense having the, you know, low strings more towards the bridge high strings more towards the neck, kind of balance things out a bit. Um, but what's cool is that you can switch between these two options. So you got this P position in the middle, and then this P position, the, the two closest to the bridge, in the, you know, position one. So uh, really cool. Then volume and tone, pretty simple. It's uh, kind of old school. You can't really see it too well, I don't think. Uh, but it's got the uh, position markers, the, you know, old school little metal eyelets. Uh, heavy duty jack plate, so you're not going to worry about that. It's got the pure tone jack, so it kind of kind of have to push it in a little further than you might think, but that's because it locks in further than you know most input jacks do. Not going to have any blowouts on the gig from the jack, that's for sure. A uh, high mass bridge as well as a brass plate for extra sustain, being a short scale at 30 inches on the nose. Uh, I guess that can help out quite a bit. Um, on the back, let's flip this over from this beautiful sparkle. It goes all the way through the uh, the finish here, except for the neck. Back of the neck is not sparkle. Um, hip shot ultralights, and also Mike Watt's little uh, signature sticker there. And yeah, that's I mean that's the brunt of it. Now, I'll I'll play some more sound demos in just a second here, but I think the the most noteworthy thing to me. Um, one of the many points of Reverend Instruments that always sticks out to me is that they're always balanced. On the knee, anyway. And when you sit down with a reverend, you know, most of them that you sit down with are going to be balanced on your knee, which I think is something often overlooked. It's a sign of proper design, if you ask me, when it comes to instruments. However, a lot of us have learned how to play without proper designed instruments over the years. And that includes Mr. Mike Watt, because this instrument does not balance well on a strap. It's kind of balanced okay with this. This is a heavier duty nylon or cotton strap, um, but it definitely is kind of it has a tendency to lurch forward a little bit because the the neck, uh, the uh, strap buttons on the back of the heel here instead of like on the horn, you know, up here or anything. So you kind of get that almost classic EBO neck dive if your strap is too puny. And if you look at videos of Mike playing, he's always playing like this. You know, a la Fieldy, I guess. <laughs> Though Fieldy, of course, came way after. And that's that's his style. And 
I mean, this does not say Eric plays bass on it, so this is not my signature bass. Uh, but I thought I'd point that out because that was something that stood out to me because I'm, I'm used to the balance that most uh, reverends have, which if you are interested in a more balanced version of this bass, essentially, uh, the Sentinel was literally designed to be the, you know, non-signature version of what the Watt Plower accomplishes, basically. And it's what I have my eye on uh, if I end up selling my Sarek, which is hiding in the background underneath the sunlight right now. You can see videos and demos of my Sarek galore on this channel if you click around and go to my video section. But today, this is the star. I mean, how could it not be? Look at all the sparkles. Look at that. I lo love all the sparkles here. This is root beer sparkle. So, uh, yeah, I just started with a little Joe McCarthy's Ghost, an older Minutemen tune, at the request of actually Ken, the CEO of Reverend. Uh, he said he had not heard someone play that song before, so I thought I'd volunteer. <laughs> but let me dial in a little bit. Uh, that was kind of a unique tone. If you listen back to that original track, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. So I'm going to try to dial in something a little bit different now, something more conventional for me, I guess. I think that will be about it. Pull back that gain a little bit. Let's see how we got here. Hey, that's a little more standard for me. Uh, the only thing missing on this bass, by the way, is the truss rod cover. I took it off because I had to do a little neck tweak. It's uh, uh, heading towards winter here in northwestern Ohio, so, you know, wood's going to be wood, and wood was originally a tree, so instruments like to adjust this time of year it's very natural uh but yeah let's uh, let's go to the pickup position so um i'm in the uh, bridge position i guess you'd call it where it's the reverse p close to the bridge this is the brightest position so um i really don't know too many minutemen songs so I, I was listening to this really great live i'll even link it in the description um and i was trying to pick up some verse from that so let's uh let's just jam a little bit you know try not to make this much longer than 10 minutes so I'm using, I meant to ma mention it, or I'll mention it in the, in the description, but uh, uh, all I'm plugged into is my Sonic Research Turbo Tuner Mini and the Origin FX Bass Rig Super Vintage. That's like an SVT in a box. It's the best one out there that I've found. Um, it's my go-to recommendation if you're looking for an amp in a box, uh, an otherwise simple setup. So but that's it. It goes that into my SSL6 console, into my RME Babyface Pro FS, and uh, using OBS to record everything here, so... Uh, let's roll the tone back. Let's see what we can do with the tone back. I'm going to roll the gain back a little bit more. This is a hot bass, at least in these positions. When you go to the neck, though, a lot less volume and less output. That's on purpose. There we go. Let's try that. Let's roll the tone back a little bit. Let's get more closer to that uh, old school P bass uh, sound here. So I'm going to roll it half, about halfway right there. Now onward to the middle position, that is the standard P bass. 
Uh, if you pick up a Watt Plower Mark I, it's pretty much literally what it should sound like. So everything all the way back up. Tone halfway down. All right, and then the neck position. Again, this is intentionally much quieter. I guess Mike likes to uh, pull it all the way up and do kind of more up top stuff. So let's try that. Tone halfway. I think it's about it. I mean, I, I if you guys need more uh, specific sound demos, you know, feel free to reach out. I'll see if I can borrow this again. But I think that gives a good general overview, something I wanted to see as a fan of Reverend and as a bass player that was interested in it. So, uh, again, recapping, um, Watt Power Mark II, uh, three positions on the pickup, you know, neck, neck up here, classic P in the middle, uh, reversed P in the bridge, uh, volume tone, Pal Faro, I didn't say that, but, you know, it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, Karina body, I'm pretty sure. Maybe a mahogany neck? Who cares? Um, but it feels good. It balances well on a knee. It can balance okay with a good strap. Uh, hip shots help out with that. Beautiful root beer gold sparkle. It's Mike Watt. You dig it, right? And we jam a cano, don't we? <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for being here, and uh, you take it easy out there.